Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from October-November 2023, paper 2, variant 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. Question 1 part A says compare scalar and vector quantities. Very common question you need to understand what is difference between scalar and vector. Scalar quantities they only have magnitude. So scalar quantities they only have magnitude but vector quantities they have magnitude and direction. So this is the difference. This is how you need to compare. They have magnitude and also they have direction direction so these two points you have to mention you can say scalar and vector quantities they have magnitudes but scalar quantities they do not have direction so in our answer we have to write down two points we can mention these two points in our answer if you have mentioned you will get two marks scalar and vector have magnitude vector has direction and scalar does not have direction and this question has two marks part b says the radius of a small sphere is determined from a measurement of the volume of the sphere the sphere is submerged in water displacing some of the water into a measuring cylinder as shown in figure 1.1 the measured volume of displaced water is 28.0 plus minus 0.5 centimeters Q. Calculate the radius in centimeters of the sphere. So we have volume of sphere. So first of all, we can write on volume of sphere is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube. We need to find out value of radius so we can rearrange. So this is 3 times volume of sphere divided by 4 pi. Now we need value of r. So we have to take cube root on both sides divided by 4 pi cube root so this is cube root now simply you need to plug in values volume of sphere is 28.0 centimeters cube we no need to convert this unit because final answer has to be in centimeters so this is divided by 4 pi and the power of this one is 1 by 3 so if we solve this one we will get 1.9 centimeters and this is radius up to 1 dp because this is also precise up to 1 dp. So our final answer is 1.9 centimeters. Second part says calculate the percentage uncertainty in the radius of the sphere. And radius of sphere we have already discussed is equal to 3 times volume divided by 4 pi and cube root of this side. Cube root. Now we need to calculate percentage uncertainty in R. Percentage uncertainty in R. If you look at these given quantities, you can see this is constant. So this one is constant. So it simply means that the percentage uncertainty in R is 1 over 3 of percentage uncertainty in volume. So this is the main thing you need to understand. Now simply we can write on here 1 by 3 how we can calculate percentage uncertainty in V. So we have absolute uncertainty. This is delta V and this one is V. So this is simply equal to delta V by V multiply by 100. Now simply we need to plug in values. Delta V is 0.5 and V is 28.0 multiply by 100. So if we simplify, we will get 1 by 3 and here we will get 1.79%. Now if we solve, we will get 0.6% up to 1 SF. So this is our final answer, 0.6%. So this is how you can calculate. Question 2 says a hot air balloon floats just above the ground. The balloon is stationary and is held in place by a vertical rope as shown in figure 2.1. Balloon has a weight of 3.39 times 10 to 4 newtons. Tension in the rope is 4.00 times 10 to 2 newtons. Up thrust acts on the balloon. The density of the surrounding air is 1.23 kg per cubic meter. Far part A1 on figure 2.1 draw labeled arrows to show directions of three forces acting on the balloon. So first of all we can simply draw one force that is the weight of the balloon. We can simply say weight of the balloon is acting downwards. So we can say this is weight of the balloon and up thrust will be acting vertically up. So we can say this is up 
thrust the third force is the tension is the tension is up or is the tension is down so you need to understand this balloon has tendency to go up if no string no rope it will go up but now string is pulling this balloon down so the tension in the string is down so we can say this is tension so the tension is down so this is how you need to draw these three forces tension is down tension is not up because the rope is pulling balloon downwards so the tension is in downward direction now for the second part we need to calculate the volume of the balloon to three significant figures of the balloon theory significant figure we need to calculate volume so in this case we can simply write down up thrust up thrust this is equal to tension in the string plus weight of the balloon weight of the balloon because the mass of the string is negligible from here we can write down up thrust this will be equal to rho vg time tension times weight of the balloon we need to find out volume of the balloon so simply we can say this is equal to tension plus weight divided by rho times g now simply we need to plug in values tension is 4.00 times 10 to 2 newtons and weight of the balloon is 3.39 times 10 to 4 newtons density of surrounding air is given that is 1.23 kgs per cubic meter and we have value of g that is 9.81 now simply we need to calculate this one if we calculate our final answer will be 2.84 times 10 to 3 meter cube so this is volume of the balloon means 2.84 times 10 to 3 cubic meters this is volume of the balloon question says the balloon is released from the rope calculate the initial acceleration of the balloon acceleration simply we can calculate if we have value of the net force on the balloon and we divide by mass of the balloon we can find acceleration of the balloon we have discussed in the previous part when this balloon was stationary it's not moving stationary forces on this balloon are balanced we have discussed that up thrust is equal to t plus w and now when we cut this rope net force we can say f net will be equal to u minus w and from here we can see this is equal to t so it means f net is equal to tension in the rope when balloon was stationary so simply we need to plug in value of t here that is f net and value of t is given to us in the previous part that is equal to 4.00 times 10 to 2 and we need to divide by mass of the balloon but we have weight of the balloon means w divided by g so this is mass of the balloon now we can plug in values here 4.00 times 10 to 2 and this is divided by weight of the balloon that was 3.39 times 10 to 4 and we need to divide this by 9.81 so this is the mass now if we simplify this one we will get 0.12 meters per second per second so this is initial acceleration of the balloon part b says the balloon is stationary at a height of 500 meters above the ground a tennis ball is released from rest and falls vertically from the balloon a passenger in the balloon uses the equation v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s to calculate the ball will be traveling at a speed of approximately 100 meters per second when it hits the ground explain why the actual speed of the ball will be much lower than 100 meters per second when it hits the ground so first of all if you look at this equation we need to understand when we can use this equation v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s it started from rest so simply we can say v square is equal to 2 a s in the calculation passenger has used a is equal to g a is equal to g and this is equal to 9.81 meters per second per second and passenger got answer that is approximately 100 meters per second but actually when the ball is falling there is air resistance as well 
so when the ball is falling there are two forces acting on the ball one is the weight weight so this is assuming only force acting on the ball is the weight weight so the net force in this case net force will be equal to m but in this case when there is air there so there is force by air upward mean air resistance is upwards so the net force in this case f net this will be equal to w minus f air so it means the net force in the second case will be lower and a is equal to f net over m so if f net is lower it means value of a will be lower if value of a is lower it means that the final velocity that will be lower so these are the points you need to understand to answer this question i hope it makes sense to you let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer in your answer you can talk about these points you can simply say there is air resistance which increases with speed so as this ball is falling down ball is accelerating speed of the ball is increasing so air resistance is also increasing because air resistance depends on speed means harder you hit the air particles they will apply more force on the ball means as ball is moving faster ball is hitting on air particles harder and harder so air particles are hitting on the ball harder and harder so that's the reason air resistance increases with speed average resultant force is less than weight as we have discussed here means the average this resultant force this will be less than weight because this is minus mean minus air resistance or we can say average acceleration is less than g as we have discussed here in this case average acceleration this will be less than g in presence of air so final speed is less than 100 meters per second because if a is lower it means v will be lower so this is how you need to answer just read question carefully and try to use your understanding of physics so it's very important if you start solving question based on understanding you will develop yourself very fast but if every time you look at the question you check the mark scheme and write down your answer you will never develop your understanding so when you see a new question always do by yourself try to use your understanding of physics and answer the question not just quickly look at the answer because that will never develop your brain will not develop understanding of physics to develop your understanding of physics you have to first try by yourself so your brain will start working in the same way so it's very important always do question first by yourself where you get stuck then ask for help but not you just look at the question look at the mark scheme that is not good that is not physics that is just a way to memorize in physics if you memorize you will never develop yourself and always you will be struggling with unseen questions part c says before the balloon is released the rope holding the balloon has a strain of 2.4 times 10 to minus 5 the rope has an unstretched length of 2.5 meters the rope obey hooks law far part c1 show that the extension of the rope is equal to this so first of all we need to understand what is given to us so we have value of l naught l naught then we have value of strain so this is value of strain so simply we need to understand strain this is equal to delta l by l naught for this question we need to find out delta l so delta l simply will be equal to epsilon times l naught I mean this is the strain this is representing strain and value of strain we have that is equal to 2.4 times 10 to minus 5 strain has no units and l naught is 2.5 and if we solve this one we will get 6.0 times 10 to minus 5 meters so this is value of extension second part says calculate the elastic tension energy of the rope so elastic tension energy simply we can calculate this will be equal to one half f times delta x very straightforward one if a concept is clear but i'm quite sure most of you are not clear what this f is representing f is actually is the maximum force acting on the rope so 
are simply we can say this is the force acting on the rope force acting on the rope very important one in case of spring when we apply force on the spring so this will be the force maximum force acting on the spring so that is f now we need to understand what is delta x delta x is the extension so this is extension so you have to be very clear about this one actually ep this is equal to the work done on the rope so this is equal to work done on the rope work done on rope so this is equal to the average force time extension so me this is the distance and average force is force started from zero so it means you have f plus zero divided by two times delta x so this is the maximum value of force acting on the rope means in this case it is tension in the rope now simply we need to plug in values so we have one half and value of tension we have that was given to us in the last part and that is equal to 4.0 0 times 10 to 2 and extension we have just calculated here that is equal to 6.0 times 10 to minus 5 now if we solve this one we will get ep is equal to 0.012 joules so so this is the elastic potential energy of the rope and this is how you need to calculate so you need to understand what this f is representing what this delta x is representing so this is our answer question says the rope holding the balloon is replaced with a new one of the same original length and cross-sectional area the tension is unchanged and the new rope also obeys Hooke's law the new rope is made from a material of a lower young modulus state and explain the effect of the lower young modulus on the elastic tension energy of the rope we have already discussed that elastic tension energy this is equal to one half f times delta x and f is the tension in the rope and in the question it is given to us tension is unchanged it means this f is unchanged now simply we need to look at delta x how delta x is changing if delta x increase ep will increase then if delta x decrease ep will decrease and if delta x stays same it means ep will also stay same and so we need to look at young modulus it is given to us lower young modulus so simply we can say e this is equal to f divided by a means stress divided by strain so we can say this is delta x divided by x now if we rearrange we can write down this is f times x divided by a times delta x so we can make delta x the subject so we can say this is equal to fx divided by a times young modulus for this question it is given to us f is the same so this is same as before x is the same and cross-sectional area of the rope is also the same but now the new rope it has lower young modulus it means delta x will be greater so if delta x is greater it means ep will be greater so it means more extension so ep is greater than before so let's try to understand this one in the different way it means that same force has been applied for longer extension means the work done by the same force in this case is greater we apply same force but for greater displacement so the work done is greater so it means more work is done so more elastic tension energy is stored in the rope so this is meaning of this one means why ep has been increased because more work is done by the same force because same force has been applied for longer displacement so simply we need to write down in this case delta x increases so ep increases and this question has two marks now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer this is how you can write down your answer you can mention these two points in your answer if you have mentioned these two points you will get two marks i hope this video was helpful if this video was helpful please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important then if you need more help and also if you're looking for extra resources like worksheets topic wise notes and questions 
please check patreon and the link for patreon you can see in the description of this video if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments i will try to answer as soon as possible